Thank you for such a wonderful and lovely introduction. It's my privilege to be here today addressing so many young minds. As I begin my speech, I would like to say I am not supposed to be alive today. Before I proceed, I would like to show some pictures. Can I have the presentation, please? If there's a technical issue, I can do it myself. If there's a permission for screen sharing. Sorry, sir, there is a technical issue. Can you give me the permission to share, share the screen? Is that possible? So, so you can share your screen. As you can see, these are some pictures of my childhood. Yes, sir. This is one monkey looking at another monkey. This is me standing with my mother. This is again my mother carrying me. This is me on a scroller. And this is again me, a picture of me and my mother. Seems pretty normal, right? But let me tell you, I was born with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is the condition which leads to muscular impairment. And I wasn't able to move 70% of my body. It sounds too technical, right? But basically, I'm not able to use my body or brain like most people can. This led to four surgeries each one more difficult than the last. But as you can see now, I'm still here today, right now, managing to speak to you, but I wasn't supposed to be. Now, before I proceed, I would like to tell you that this is not a story to motivate you. I'm sorry to disappoint you, ladies and gentlemen. It is not probably about hope either. Although I have been told by people that I inspire them. Instead, this is a story about how the universe is magical, conspiring to lead you to your destiny. But when you are surrounded by trauma, you can't really tell what the point of all of it is. Let me explain. When I completed my four surgeries, I was given a new shot at life. And I realized I was very different from my peers. I looked different. I talked different. I walked different. And anybody who saw me treated me like an invalid person, as if I am somebody who needs to be fixed. Every time my parents took me out on the scroller, people would see me and they would assume 
that I am not able to hear them or understand them. They would speak to me in baby tones. Are you able to hear me? Can you understand me? When, when medical science could not cure my cerebral palsy, I was subjected to humiliation through offerings and healings given at temples and places of worship. It wasn't really anybody's fault. My parents were just desperate and looking for cures. When I finally had time to start my schooling, my mother was a successful lawyer. And um, as all mothers, she did not think twice before sacrificing her career for me. She quit her job and she wanted to ensure that I did my schooling and post schooling in education institutes meant for normal people. I was rejected from 30 institutes, but my mother never gave up. You know, everything in the world pales in comparison as compared to the power and strength of a mother. She had to face a lot of backlash. She had to face a lot of objections. People to hold her that put him in a special institution and be done with it. Why sacrifice your career for him? They considered my education to be a very bad investment. They said, well, he won't be able to take care of you when you grow old. So why invest so much money be behind his education? My mother's extraordinary grit and resolve had already endowed me and fortified me with the help that I required to be mentally strong and make a difference in the world. When it was time to start my career, my able-bodied peers started collecting checks and signing of bonuses and kick-started their career. For the life of me, I wasn't able to land a job. If you say it was because of bad CGPA, think again. I had a 9.05 CGPA in my MBA and PGPM. I was rejected from six interviews without any thought. I wasn't rejected because of my performance, but because of my physical attributes. When I got rejected from six interviews, I was disappointed. But I figured, why should I plead for a job when I can give others one? To help with the world, if they don't give me a job, I'll just figure something out for myself. I took a leap of faith and I decided to start my own PR firm. And it all made sense because PR, PR is nothing but human relationships and how you leverage them to get what you want. It came to me naturally because in my childhood, I spent months in the hospital with death looming over my head. Every time I entered the operating table, I found comfort in hospital staff and the people around me there. I still remember when I used to wake up from, from the operation, from the anesthesia, I used to share laughs and jokes with the hospital staff and they used to tell me, how can you be so brave? How do you find the courage? I am like in, in the world of disappointment, a smile is all that matters. With limited social interaction, I had to work hard to become normal. Through observation, I understood why people do what they do and what matters to them when they are inches away from death and why being so different, each one of us 
striving hard to achieve their own definition of normal. I realized at the end, we are all look, just looking to create an impact. And PR, PR helped me realize that the crucial dynamics of deeper connectivity in the human connection lies with everybody. It helps you to connect with all sections of the society. That's what I did then. Surrounded by people fighting death, struggling to outrun their loneliness. I struggled to outrun my loneliness and isolation. That's what I do now. I understand human beings and I understand and what drives a brand. I understand and how to forge relationships and what matters to them the most. I understand how to create narratives. I understand how to use my network to leverage the brand. I created PR signal to understand the simple truth of life. Some relationships are meant to last a lifetime. And PR signal is all about creating relationships and maintaining them to last a lifetime. Through my network in PR, I have been fortunate enough to connect with people from United Nations, World Economic Forum, Forbes, Entrepreneur, and many other organizations. It has also helped me represent Rotary International, International Human Rights Organization, the Asian Network, and many other organizations. Now remember, I told you that this is not a story to motivate you or inspire you. This is why. Because along the way, I have realized that it wasn't ever about me. I was always enough. And I was never broken. I did not need to be fixed. Whatever I was, I don't know about my physical capabilities, but my mental capabilities were always at par with my peers, maybe even greater than them. I was never in need of sympathy. I was in need of empathy. And empathy, my dear friends, begins with diversity and inclusion. It always starts with acceptance. I am disabled and I'm proud to say that. It is not a bad thing. I have found acceptance through my parents, irrespective of being subject to judgment and humiliation. Each time I would enter the operating table, the doctor would tell my mother, your son would not make it. This might be the last time you see him. And I would see that my mother is crying every single day without any support in sight. A very terrible thing for a mother to go through, I must tell you. This is why this isn't just about me. It is about brave parents like mine, like my mother, all the mothers struggling out there. Brave parents who have children like me, who haven't given up hope. I want to show them, I want to reach them. I want to tell them that it's possible that your child and daughter can succeed. That disability is just a, a perception and people have preconceived notions about my condition. I have been repeatedly told that I should spend my energy to try to walk or try sporting activities to be enough, to be ordinary, to improve my movements. But tell me my dear friends, am I defined only by my ability to move? Is, is walking, is the ability to walk what defines me? Can't I choose my own aspirations? Can't I have my own dreams? 
does that make me lazy or incompetent? Dear ladies and gentlemen, do not label me with your preconceived notions. Let me choose my own labels because if I have never been ashamed of my disability, you certainly never need to be. You don't have to give up hope on people like me. People like us can strive to be better every day. People like us can strive to be more than we are supposed to be. People like us and people like me can make the world a better place. If I can reach even one parent, one brother, one sister, not to give up on a person with a disability and hold on to their hope to help fight their vulnerability, to not give up on their son, to not give up on their daughter, I would know my journey was worth it because my mother cried a lot of tears to give rise to a strong person. And I want to become a voice for those who have struggled with no support in sight. If I am able to help even one person make that journey, I would know my journey on this planet was worth it. My time on this planet was worth it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.